open up your mouth to give God the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's certainly good to be in the house of the Lord. If you're excited, will you clap your hands for Jesus? Hallelujah. Our worship team is coming to take us higher. Oh! 
I don't know about you, but I heard them, and they said, the giants, the walls, they got to come down. You ought to find your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you're wrestling with. I don't know what you're going through, but they got to come down. Why? But we, because we serve under God, and his name is Jesus. And he's the rock of my salvation. And as long as I got him, he said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. They gotta fall down. Woo. It's prayer time in the house of the Lord. It's time for prayer in the house of the Lord. Woo. Whatever you're wrestling with, Come on, drop it at the altar. It got to come down. They got to come down. How do we get through it? In prayer. In prayer. If you believe in God for something in this house, we want to pray with you this morning. Every giant, every lie of the enemy, it got to come down. It got to come down. It's a commandment. He said, speak those things that are not as though they were there's power in the name of Jesus you gotta speak it you gotta believe it gotta come down everything you're wrestling with it gotta come down it gotta come down matter of fact it's already coming down I said matter of fact it's already coming down it's already coming down your mind is already getting back in shape. Your family is coming back together. Your health is getting back in alignment. Your finances is getting back to I said it's already coming down. Every lie of the enemy. You shall live and not die. You are the head and not the tail. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I shall have whatever I say. Why? Because he's my daddy. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And he said, I shall have whatever. It's already coming down. It's already coming down. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we thank you. Because you are God and God alone. You are our Father. Abba Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth God Father God in the name of Jesus we thank you because you're here now you're here your people and we honor you we make you big over all of our problems over all of our circumstances because you're good, you're mighty, you're awesome, you're redeemer, you're strong tower, you're the king of kings, you're the lord of lords. You sit on the throne and you look down upon us, Father. 
and you grant us brand new grace and brand new mercy every time we open our eyes and so God we honor you this morning and we say thank you now God we pray for every individual under the sound of my voice father specifically those that have come to the altar father gathering here in need of prayer father God in the name of the Lord Jesus we thank you father for you've heard their hearts cry you've heard their hearts desire father in the name of Jesus so now God we pray over their lives father we pray God that as they go back father they will not find what it is that was turmoil uh, tormenting them father they will not find it the same god for you're breaking every lie of the enemy you're breaking every word curse you're breaking every diagnosis father we know what the doctor said and we thank you father for him helping us god but we believe the word of the lord father in the name of jesus father we thank you father for their lives and for the family members that they're standing in the gap for them in the name of jesus we pray God that you will be a heart fixer and a mind regulator father that you would give us the ability to, father to bring those things into captivity father that are not in accordance to your word father for you said in your word father that you've given us power to walk over and trample over scorpions and demons father in the name of the Lord Jesus so God we push forward we advance the kingdom for the kingdom suffered violence but father the violence will take it by force father in the name of the Lord Jesus so we stand on your word we stand on the word of God that says we shall have whatever we say father according to your will so we speak healing in the name of the Lord Jesus healing in our mind healing our bodies father in the name of Jesus we thank you God for we are your people father and you say you'll never leave us nor forsake us father in the name of the Lord Jesus so we know that you won't start now God so do what only you can do God be a comforter now in the name of Jesus be a heart fixer now God we call on you the great head of the church and we give you glory for it now we give you glory God in the name of the Lord Jesus that every giant has to come down and it's already coming down father we praise you God in advance for what you're getting ready to do in our lives we open up our mouths God and we honor you we give you the fruit of our lips we give our lives back to you in the name of the Lord Jesus we make the vow and we make the pledge God to repent and turn back to you father in the name of Jesus we thank you we thank you Lord we honor you because you're good and we're not so father on behalf of every person here we come as boldly as we know how asking that you will hear us if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray then will you hear us from heaven and heal our land heal us God make us right make us new give us clean hands and a pure heart so that we may worship you for you are spirit and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth we honor you we bless you and we give you the praise we give you the glory we give you the honor it's in Jesus name come on if you believe it will you clap those hands come on clap those hands for Jesus come on come on like it's already done come on like you believe it why don't the redeemed of the Lord say so come on if you've been redeemed you ought to show some sign you ought to say so come on as you're going back to your seat hug on somebody let them know it's well it's well every giant every giant is already fell he's been defeated hallelujah hallelujah Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You believe in the power of prayer. You can make more noise than that. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to do this for me real quick. We do know um, that God has blessed many of us here at New Home. So as you look to your left and your right, you see a lot of people on vacation. 
want you to help me help them find worship. Grab your cell phone. I want you to share the broadcast. I need them to have the opportunity to be a part of what God is doing. We thank God for technology. New Home is not a place that you just got to be inside the service, but you can also watch outside of the service. So grab your phone, share it with somebody. Maybe you don't want to put it on your page. Just send it to their inbox and tell them you shared all that stuff about Diddy this week. I need to share something with you about Jesus Christ. Y'all going to act like they ain't send it to you, y'all. I know y'all. Amen. As you're doing so, if you swear you look good today, go and take a picture of your fine self and put it on Facebook. Tell them where you are. Come on. Tell them exactly. What's up, bro? Good to see you, man. Wherever you are, just take that picture. Let them know you at church right before Thanksgiving. You in here giving God thanks. Amen. We want you to do that. While you're doing all of that, are there any first time, second time visitors today? If so, can you just stand? We don't want you to say nothing. We just want to see you. If you're first time, second time visitors, please stand. Come on, let's make some noise. My brother, how you doing, man? Come on, let's make some noise. That ain't a new home welcome. I need... Amen. Amen. We're definitely grateful that you chose to stop by. We know that there's plenty of churches in the area, but I believe the Bible will let us know that we have to make sure that we entertain all strangers uh, properly because you could be an angel unaware. And so it's our desire to welcome you, not just to this campus, but welcome you to fellowship and worship with us. I pray and believe, hope and uh, desire for something to be said and something to be sung that will encourage you to keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. If you're sitting next to a visitor, tell them, say, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Uh huh. All right. All right. Now we got to make sure we embrace each other uh, because this is a season where uh, many people are dealing with holiday blues. Some call it holiday grief. The reality that many people are going into this holiday without some of their loved ones. And so it's necessary for us to equip ourselves with a smile on our face. It's necessary for us to give people grace and give them hugs and love because in this season, a lot of people are struggling. So look at somebody else down the road say hey look at you with your looking self I see you doing what you doing looking how you looking praising how you praising <laughs> yeah 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 let's embrace one another uh, especially in this season while we've done all of that we definitely thank God uh, for the opportunity to be here mama would say it like this I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord so if you're thankful for God I need you to give God the best praise you can give him come on you got 20 seconds I said you got 20 seconds you got 15 seconds I think you about at 10 now if God been good to you come on only if you love him come on hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We can be cute, but we got to be crazy about God. Amen. Don't get dressed just to look like that. No, no. I got dressed so I could show out for my Jesus. Amen. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. All right, so we're moving. Um, we do have our announcements, but the video, uh, the volume was tripping on us a little bit earlier. Uh, but we want to give these announcements to you. Our Next Steps new membership class is now in session. Uh, it's at 9 o'clock every Sunday in the Fellowship Hall. If you're a new member or you are a member, you've been a member for a while, but you have not been to the Next Steps classes, I need you to get there. Look at somebody say, get there, get there. You know you've been here for a while. You're smiling right now because you ain't been yet. I need you to get there. Get there. 9 o'clock every Sunday morning uh, is in session now. If you get there by next Sunday, you can catch up. If you don't get there by next Sunday, we'll see you in January. Amen. All right. New Home Family, we also want you to know we're in our Turkey Day uh, Classic Parade for that little school they call Alabama State University. Um, they... <laughs> This is a Turkey Day Classic Parade. The lineup will be open at 6.30 a.m., I believe, at the Patterson Field parking lot. If you're participating in the parade, please be at the church campus by 6 o'clock to travel in your vehicles or carpool to Patterson Field. Dress warm in your new home attire. Huh? Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm meeting at Patterson Field. Amen. I'm reading that like I don't know about that one. You trying to make me wake up earlier. The, 
<laughs> the parade starting time will be at 9 o'clock a.m. If you just want to stand and watch, any place on Dexter Avenue is a great spot. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you all. That's from the youth department. Can we make some noise for them? Amen. Uh, I believe the men's ministry, we have a sign-up sheet outside. We desire to take the distinguished gentleman for a night out of fun to the WWE. Uh, it's going to be wrestling at the Coliseum in Montgomery, Alabama. That is January the 20th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Our distinguished gentlemen are the age group of 5th grade to 12th grade. Somebody shout 5th grade, grade to 12th grade. Sign your young men up. We want to develop a relationship with them outside of church so that we can mentor them properly when they leave the church campus. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to continue to pray for those who are uh, dealing with sickness and bereavement. I believe ultimately, child of God, I have no names here for bereavement or sickness at this moment, but I do believe that all of us in this season have to make sure we're taking vitamins, wrapping up, and making sure that we're uh, taking care of ourselves. I want you to know this. Uh, it's always often, it's, it's the norm, rather, for churches and church attendance and church finances to drop in these winter seasons. I want to tell you this. I care more about all of us being safe then I care about attendance okay um, I don't want us to be packed in here and you know you got a cold stay at home with your, with your stuff whatever that is keep it at home we got people in here that have low immune systems things of that nature nobody needs to get sick I'd rather preach to you whether through a screen or in front of you versus preach over you at a funeral amen all right I just want you to know we do want to continue to pray for Adonis Jenkins, and sister Tamika Jenkins' son. Uh, he is out of the hospital. He was here with us last Sunday. Can we make some noise for him? He is a trooper. We thank God for him. We want to continue to pray for Nay Walton. Uh, uh, Nay Walton, her and her uh, husband now, they got married last Sunday at 2 o'clock, I believe it was. And uh, it was a beautiful wedding. So can we give God praise for them? Amen. I'm sure as soon as they're uh, free, they'll be back in the place so y'all can see them. Amen. Y'all acting like you ain't been there before. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're moving further, but I am excited because this is a great opportunity for all of us to participate in worship. It is the moment for you to prepare your hearts to give whatever it is you have to give unto the Lord. It's offering time. Y'all ain't smiling no more. Look at somebody say it's offering time. It's offering time. Come on, as we give, we all can't give the same quantity, but we can give with the same quality. God loves a, a cheerful giver. So put a smile on your face as you give unto the Lord. Don't give grudgingly, but give like you're excited to give. Give God your best at this time. Press down, shaking together, running over. Everybody clap your hands. Praise down. Say, run it over. Run it over. Oh, 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 oh. When you give, when you give to the Lord, He will give you more. Cheerfully. Blessings running over. Running over. Oh, do, 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 do. Blessings running over. Press down. Shaking together. If you've already given, come on. Jump to your feet. Put your hands together right there, right there. Come on. Say, press down. Shaking together. Running over. That's the Bible. I need y'all to get that. We're going to cut the music. Everybody say it. Pray it down. Pray it down. Take it Run it over. We're going to.
to sing it till you get it. Whatever you got, give it to the Lord. Praise the Turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Yes, it will. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Yeah, yeah. Say, late. God's gonna. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Yes, it will. Sing. If you believe it, put your hand in the air, wave it like you just don't care. Put your hand in the air, wave it like you just don't care. I got more than enough, but I'm going to get my stuff. I got more, going to get my stuff. I got more, but I'm going to get my If you believe it, come on, help me say it. Say, I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. You say it now. That. If you believe it, say now. I'm living in the overflow. Say it, say it. Right hand extended towards heaven. Everyone on their feet. Come on. Yes, Lord. Right hand extended towards heaven. Say, Lord, Lord. with a cheerful heart, I sow my seed. Say, today, I planted in good ground. Say, I believe my needs are met and my family is blessed. Shout it like you believe it. Say, I'm expecting. A supernatural harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe it, come on, put those hands together as we go higher in worship. Oh, it's 
destroy every yoke we need the oil oil of the Lord sing we need oil
We need God always. Show up in this place. Move how you want to move. Do what you're coming to do. We need the oil. We need the oil. God arrest us. Yeah. Everything to me, 
Wiping the tears that falling from my eyes. Thank you for rocking me in the midnight hour. Hey, 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 hey. Jesus, Jesus, my burning bearer, my heavy load sharer, pick me up when I'm down. Makes everything all right. I wish I had a witness in the house. Can't nobody. Can't nobody hold me like him, rock me like him, keep me like him. She. Didn't deserve it, 
but he did it anyway. Didn't deserve it, but he did it anyway. I need you to get that one thought in your mind about what he did for you. And you know that you didn't deserve it anyway, but he did it. You ought to tell God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Been good to me in spite of me. Watched over me all night long. Hey. Who did it? Somebody. Who did it for you, Jesus? Who did it? Who woke you up? Who started you on your way? Who kept your mind? Who kept your family? Who did it for you? Open your mouth up. Call them in the morning. Call them in the noonday. Call them late at night. Call them. Hey, hey. Everything. Mm, everything to me. Everything. Oh Lord, everything to me. Everything. Everything to me. God Almighty, everything to me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all He's done for me, my soul got a cry. Hallelujah! Thank you for saving a wretch like me. Y'all don't get it. I once was blind. Good God Almighty. Oh, but now I can see how one would love. But now I'm found. You ought to thank God because you're alive and well today. You can hear my voice say, hey. Y'all got to learn how to praise Him for the small stuff. Got breath in my body. Hey. Oh, one more time. Everything, everything, everything to me, he said. Everything, everything, he said. Everything to me, he said. You're everything. Y'all ought to hug somebody out there. Come on. Hug somebody who's sitting next to you. Let them know it's going to be all right. Come on, tell them I am a living testimony. Should have been dead and gone, but he's everything to me. Say, everything. If you're really thankful, you ought to open your mouth and say, He's everything to me. Everything. My, 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 everything to me. God Almighty, everything to me. Everything to me. Everything. Everything. Everything to me. I want you to look at a neighbor real quick. Just tell them something God done for you. Come on. Come on. Tell somebody what God done for you. If you tell them what he did for you and they don't clap, they ain't ready for God to do it for them. But I came to tell somebody, ain't no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do the same for you. Tell somebody what he did for you. Come on. Y'all done already? He did more than that. Find somebody, tell them what God did for you. Come on, this ain't the moment to sugarcoat that thing. Let them know you was out there, but he brought you in here. Come on. This ain't the moment to sugarcoat that thing. The bullet went right over your head, but look at you. 
You're still here, kept by the grace of God. Everything to me, everything. Everything. Oh. Mm. Everything to me, say. Everything. Everything. Oh, la, la. Everything to me. Life and breath. Yes, you are. We got a moment. He's been everything to me. Yeah. Life and breath. Good God Almighty. He's been everything to me. Say, hey. Joy in sorrow. Say right there for me. Say, joy in sorrow. Say right there. Somebody need this. Joy in sorrow. Good God Almighty. Joy in sorrow. He'll be a joy in sorrow. Hallelujah. Joy in sorrow. He'll be a joy in sorrow. Your joy in sorrow. Come on, help me. He'll be your hope for tomorrow. Tell somebody. It ain't over till God says it's over. Whatever you're dealing with, he'll be your hope for tomorrow. Hey. I bow before the king. We bow before the king. If you give him honor, God will bless you today. Hey, hey, hey. Bow before the king. Why do we bow? One more time. Everything, sir. Everything. Everything to me, sir. Everything. 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 No, 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 no. Everything to me. Everything. Everything. Oh. Everything to me. Everything. Say. Close it right here. Everything to me. Yeah. You're everything to me. I need all of my worshipers to open your mouth. Come on, this is your moment. Come on, worshipers. This is your moment, yeah. Open your mouth and tell them thank you for all you've done for me. Open your mouth and tell them. Come on, open your mouth and tell them. Open your mouth and tell them. Open your mouth and tell them. It's been hard, but God's on your side. You've been down, but God's about to pick you up. Open your mouth and tell them thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for, for me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're going to get to the word. But you've been... Lord, you've been so good. God, I got to stop and thank you because you've been, come on, help me, so You've been, yeah, so good. I do want to. Lord, 
friends turned their back on me, but you've been my, 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 my. Lord, you've been my friend. Anybody can testify. He's been my When I was lonely, he did yeah, been my friend. I just wanna one more time just for me. One more time just for me. We're gonna cut the music. One big choir. Come on, open your mouth if you're thankful. Thank you. One last time, say, I just want to. Come on, if you're thankful. Yeah. I was a praise and worship leader first. Don't, don't push me. But when I think about God,
Stop. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Hallelujah. I told y'all I was a worshiper first, huh? We we getting close to Thanksgiving. If you ain't got nothing to thank God for, something wrong with you. Grab your Bible. Get to the book of Malachi, chapter two. My mama say, if it had nothing for the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be? Good God Almighty, where if it had not to if it not? All of us standing, Malachi chapter two. Malachi chapter two. I wanna know. Amen. Let's stand for the word of God. Come on, children of God. Let's honor God. We stand for the football team. We stand for volleyball matches. We stand for judges. And ain't none of them wake you up this morning. Can you stand for the true and living God as we read this scripture? It says in Malachi chapter 2, verse number 1, And now, O priest, this command is for you. If you will not listen, if you will not take it to heart, to give honor to my name says the Lord of hosts then I will send the curse upon you and I will curse your blessings indeed and I have already cursed them because you do not lay it to heart he said behold I will rebuke your offspring and spread dung on your face the dung of your offerings and you shall be taken away with it God says, so shall you know that I have sent this command to you that my covenant with Levi may stand, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant with him was one of life and peace and I gave them to him. It was a covenant of fear and he feared me. He stood in all of my name. True instruction was in his mouth and no wrong was found on his lips because he walked with me in peace and uprightness and he turned many from iniquity. For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge and the people should seek instruction from his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Verse number eight says, but you have turned aside from the way you have caused many to stumble by your instructions. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. Last verse, verse number nine. And so I make you despised and abased before all the people inasmuch as you do not keep my ways, but show partiality in your instruction. Neighbor, I need you to look at your neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor. Pastor has something to preach. And he wants you to know, you got to do it from the heart. Look at somebody else say, from the heart, from the heart. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withers, the flowers thereof fade. But the word of the Lord shall stand forever. Father God, we thank you. You've been kind to us. Your precious spirit is here with us. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. Now, God, as we desire to open up and delve into your word, it's my prayer that you use me, your vessel, play me in your key, play me to your pace. Allow me, God, to say what it is you desire to be said. My simple and earnest prayer is less of Lee and more of thee. In the mighty name of Jesus, all of God's children ought to shout amen. From the heart. From the heart. Child of God, I've been telling you for the past three weeks as we've been in this study concerning the book of Malachi that God deserves his honor. 
As we looked at this text in verse number six, he said, if I'm your father, then where is my honor? Can, can I tell you something? The picture is clear, but most of us don't understand that this whole book is really about honor, not money. It's about the reality that you can honor God with your money, but your money ain't the only thing that ought to honor God. God says, I'm looking for what you have just as much as who you are. Look at your neighbor say, who you are matters. And what you give matters. I want you to get this because we started talking about the reality that he's overall talking to an audience of believers that he has brought out of bondage and now they're free. But because now they're free, they've forgotten about when they were bound. They are righteous now, but they were ratchet yesterday. Come closer. They were hood last week, but now they're a little holy. And what happens in the black church is that once we've been in church for a good amount of time, we act like we ain't never do nothing out in the world. Y'all gonna help me preach or not? I need the real folk in the room. All the fake folk you can leave, but I need the folk that can tell the truth. God's still working on me. And the reality is I'm grateful that he's working on me and I'm grateful he gave me memory because when I look back from where I used to be, I can thank God I'm not where I used to be, although I may not be where I need to be. It's interesting because he's talking to them and he tells them I deserve my honor because I've loved you in spite of you. I deserve my honor because I've given you blessing after blessing. I deserve my honor because I'm keeping you and I'm securing your future. God says I deserve. Somebody shout deserve. That was verse number two through verse number five. But then last Sunday we went from verse number 6 down to verse number 10 and we, we discovered that God does not only just deserve his honor but God desires his honor. I told you about the reality that most of us have an issue and I pray that you talk to your folk about this when y'all get at the Thanksgiving table eating all your macaroni cheese and them possums and all the other stuff y'all be eating. I, I want you to talk to your people because I need you to tell them that this world is too entitled. We, we got to get people from acting like they deserve stuff because they're desiring it don't mean they deserve it. You, you, you got to work for some, I'm talking to somebody y'all ain't hearing me. I need you to talk Talk to them spoiled children of yours that you've been buying Christmas gifts for since July and tell them sometimes you're going to have to work for something. I, I know I want you to be great. I know I want you to be beautiful. I know I want your friends to never talk about you, but I ain't going to give you everything that you want. I'm going to supply your needs and you're going to work for something that you want because if you don't work for it, you're going to think it's always going to be hand. I wish I had a parent up in the room that could tell the truth. You didn't spoil them babies rotten because you're giving them stuff that you ain't never had and now they don't have they don't know how to work for anything all right where my parents at in the house because y'all awfully quiet jc penny ain't got lay away no more walmart neither if you gotta work for it you gotta teach them how to work for it they can do it even now they can begin to work children don't even do chores no more what are, what are we doing they have to work for something we was blessed but my mama reminded me boy you broke you are gonna have to work if you want it he's talking to them and he says I desire what I know I deserve I like it because God says I desire it for many different reasons he said and I need you to understand that because I desire it and because I know I deserve it when he moves to our text in chapter 2 he says now I have to demand it I told you the first time I deserve it you didn't listen I told you the second time I desire it you still ain't gave it to me God says now I have to demand what is mine child of God it gets interesting because God says and now O oh priest this command somebody shout command command that's not an if and or maybe that's a if you don't I'm gonna do something all right all right all right there's a brother that wrote this book called the anger of God and the issue with us in the 21st century is we only want to talk about the goodness of God, but we don't want to talk about when God gets mad. 
I hear you already. Well, we're a New Testament church, yeah, but you got the same old God. He is, he was, and he shall forever be. If you get on his nerves and don't do what he told you to do, eventually grace going to run out and you're going to have to deal with the wrath of God. I wish I had somebody up in here who understood that God don't owe you nothing. You owe him everything. I'm trying to grow us up real quick. Nudge your neighbor and say, grow up, grow up, grow up, child. God is not your Santa Claus. He ain't your Santa Claus. God requires you to do what he created you to do. Where is my honor? God, God says, God says, I'm demanding this because this is a moment where I need you to understand that you can't keep playing with me. Y'all said it this week. You think this a game. God says, stop playing with me. The problem with the church is that we've lost our power because we don't feel the, the Lord the right way anymore. We ain't scared of God no more. That's why we doing all the stuff we doing. Y'all quiet up in here. It's all right. I got shouts embedded in my Bible. You got to know that if you don't fear God, you will do anything. But there's some folk in here who say, I wanted to slap him, but I couldn't. I knew God would get me back. I, I wanted to cuss him, but I knew I couldn't because God would get. I know I, what I could have done, but I didn't do it because I fear the Lord. Everything that's good ain't God. And so God says, now you got to deal with the or else side of me. And if you will not listen, if you will not take it to heart to give honor to my name, God says, I've got to put something on you. It's interesting because whenever you read scripture, you have to know who he's talking to. You got to understand what he's saying. You got to pull what he said back then to what he's saying right now. Every time you read Bible, understand that if you don't have the context, you're left with the con. You got to understand the text and the context so that you'll know how to apply what the text says. Are y'all with me? This Bible study 101. Here it is. Y'all don't come to Bible study no way. Here, here it is. He, he says, you got to know who I'm talking to. The question is, God, who are the priests? He says, and now, oh, priest, check this out. Last week, he was talking about the priest in the synagogue. He was talking about the leaders, the clergy, the deacons and the pastors. He's talking to the ministers, the people in the church, allowing people to bring any type of offering to God and us not saying anything. But this time he's not talking to the priest in the synagogue. He's talking to the priest that look like you and me. Can I prove it to you? Let's go. The scripture is 1 Peter chapter number 2 verse number 9 through 10. Read it with me child of God. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Is there anybody in the room that's been saved? God says you are a royal priesthood and so when he's talking this time he's not just talking to the leaders of the church he's talking to the people in the pew and he's saying if you won't listen and give me honor I've got to do something point at your neighbor say you too what are you going to do God says my audience is the pews now and he says, I have an admonition for the pews. I said, well, God, what is your admonition? He says, well, uh, uh, it goes simply like this. If your Bible's still open and unlocked, you probably read it with me. You probably uh, got scared when it got to the word. He says, I'm going to curse you. Oh, yeah, y'all don't like that. Y'all looking at me crazy. Like, what is he going to do with this? God says, I'm going to curse you if you cannot honor me. Now, this is not those four-letter curse words that you say. I ain't talking about Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. I ain't talking about none of them. I'm talking about them words you were saying on your way here when somebody almost cut you off. Yeah. That one right there, the one you thought about. 
This, this is not curse like curse words. God says, I'm putting a curse on you. Let's, let's look at it. Uh, in biblical uh, exploration or expository preaching or Bible studying uh, or even word uh, uh, studies in context, syntax, all that good stuff, you'd find out that there's a principle called first mention. Everyone say first mention. I'm going to teach you how to study your Bible. Here it is. Whenever you want the definition to a word, you go to the first time it appeared in the Bible. And it will give you the definition of what God is saying. Let's travel to the first time in the Bible that the word curse would be used. It was used in Genesis chapter 3, uh, somewhere around, uh, where's it at? I need it. Somewhere, Genesis chapter 3, somewhere around verse number 14, I believe. Verse number 14, where it begins uh, to talk about a curse. Read it with me. You've read this before. Even when you were a little kid, it was in your Bible. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Most of us don't understand because we've always read uh, and heard this in children's church. We didn't hear all of what was happening in biblical antiquity. You got to understand that the serpent had legs in Genesis. And because the serpent had legs and he was moving to and fro, moving so fast and running his mouth, God said, I'm going to curse you, take your legs, and now I got to slow you down because you got to slither everywhere you go. Y'all ain't with me. God says, I'm cursing the serpent, so he has to work harder to get wherever he's trying to go. All right, all right. It is interesting because he's talking to the saints in Malachi chapter 2 and he says I'm going to curse you if you don't honor me but he's talking to the serpent in Genesis and he says I'm going to curse you my question was well what is it that the sovereign sees as a similarity between the serpent and the saint what do we have in common with the devil God says, you got to remember, Lucifer was in heaven with me. He was over the angelic host, singing all those good songs, but, but he got the big head. And he began to steal my glory. Y'all ain't with me. And God says, what you got in common with Lucifer, if you don't get it right, I'm going to throw you somewhere too. Y'all ain't with me. He said, I had to kick him out of heaven. It was his curse that he would be down here on earth. And God says, if you keep stealing my glory, I'm going to curse you too. Yeah. I'm going to get y'all there. Y'all wanted to shout the Sunday before Thanksgiving. I'm going to... I'm going to get you there. Check it out. Look, he says, I'm going to curse you in three areas. Is your Bible open? I want y'all to see this with me. The first curse that God says is right there in verse number two. He says, then I will send the curse upon you. The first area that God's going to curse is self. Somebody shout self. Now, for some of y'all, you don't like nothing to be on you, so say myself. Yeah, because when I say self, you would think about somebody else. Come back. Come back. God's going to curse self. Well, God, uh, if I don't honor you, you're going to curse me. What does that mean? God says, some of you have been trying to figure out why it seems like you can't get out the ditch. You've been trying to figure out why it is that you fell into a hole and every moment you get yourself close to the brim, it seems like you fall back in again. Come closer. You get one side down and another side springs up. Two steps forward, look around and you're 15 steps behind. God says it's because you're not giving me glory. 
Okay, all right. There's this, there's this text. Uh, is, is, you have Daniel up there. Give me, give me Daniel chapter 4. I want to read it to you. I, I preached this to you uh, in, in, in the summer, but here it is. He says, at the end of the 12 months, David, or rather Daniel, excuse me, was walking. No, that wasn't Daniel. That was uh, the king. Uh, king Belteshazzar was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, is not this great Babylon? which I have built by my mighty hand and my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty. Child of God, then the text says, while the words were still coming out the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. Y'all ain't getting it. God says, all of us have been just like this king. Uh, Belteshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he was one who God allowed to do some great things. But whenever you get the big head and start having a big ego, y'all know Beyonce got a big ego. No, you need to chill out and give the glory to God. Don't ever steal his glory. Always uh, give God the credit because it's in him, through him, and by him. Uh, you have everything. I wish I had at least a hundred folk up in here that could be real with your boy and say, Say, if God didn't do it, it would not have been done. If God didn't fix it, it would not have been fixed. If God didn't tell me, it would not be inside of me. He lost his cool. Because the king lost his cool, he lost everything he had. Child of God, God is going to curse you if you don't give him the glory. Well, there's another curse. He says, mm, I will curse, I will send the curse upon you, excuse me, and I will curse your blessings. God says, if I don't give him honor, he's going to curse me, myself, and then he's going to curse my stuff. Somebody shout stuff. Now, some of you don't understand this because oftentimes we don't understand God and how God works. I want you to understand that you're never waiting on a blessing. The blessing's always waiting on you. Uh, is there a scripture for this one? Uh, let's, let's read this. I want to read this because I got to make sure I give you a Bible. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 3 said, Blessed be the name or the blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. It's interesting because God's saying it's waiting for you in heaven. All right. Short bus, short bus. Backpack, backpack. Lean in. God says, the blessing is waiting on you. Check it out, check it out. It's two reasons why you ain't got your breakthrough yet. It's two reasons why you have not received your blessing yet. It's two reasons why you are not where you want to be. Reason number one, you have not done the work on yourself. The blessing is waiting on you to get yourself together. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all don't know. God says it's waiting on you. But not only is it waiting on you and you got to do the work. God said also I can block your blessings because of my wrath. If you ain't doing what I asked you to do. Why would I reward you? I wish I had some parents in the house. If you cutting up at school, I ain't buying you no ice cream today. If, if you acting a fool, making me look bad, why would I take you out? No, you finna get this beanies and weenies. You, you gonna get this ramen noodles, this spam, supposed to be ham. I'm not gonna bless you if you're not doing what I've asked you to do. And God says, at some point, you gotta get real about him. You ain't going to keep making ways out of no ways. And you keep not coming to church and giving them praise. He, he, he ain't going to keep opening up doors that no man can shut. But you ain't got sense enough to lift up your hands and tell them thank you. He ain't going to keep doing it for you. If you don't learn how to honor him. Here it is. He says there are two curses. Self and Y'all's a good class. Stuff. But there's one more. He says, uh, then I'll not only 
send the curse on you. Not only will I curse your blessings, he said, because I already cursed them. He said, but behold, that means look, I will also rebuke your offspring. God says your seed will be affected by your sin. It's tight, but it's right. The sins of the father can become the sins of the son. The sins of the daughter or the mother can be the sins of the daughter. You got to understand it is not just psychology. It is not just heredity. That a drunk will make somebody else start drinking a lot. It's not just in your genes. No, it's in your spirituality. That if parents don't get it right. Y'all quiet in this Presbyterian church. Then the children won't get it right. Y'all ain't with me. This is the moment for all of us to learn how to get our credit right. Y'all quiet. Stop using that baby name for your AT&T. Get that four month year old name and security number off of your power bill. Y'all quiet up in here. I wish I had some witnesses that could tell somebody our children should not have to start beneath us. They should not have to start right next to us. They should start out better than us. That's the problem with the black race is that we don't know how to take care of business now so that our kids can have it better next. Y'all, y'all quiet. I, I wish I had some witnesses through here that can testify that it's too many of us that don't have anything because we didn't get it from our parents. And the buck is going to stop right here. That if our parents didn't pass us nothing, we got to pass our children everything. Oh, stop blaming it on Papa being a rolling stone. You grow up, you over 18 now. Stop blaming them and get your stuff together. Y'all quiet in this Presbyterian church. Real quiet in this Presbyterian church. We got to get it together. Our inability to have a prayer life is going to impact our children's prayer life. Our inability to go to church, listen somebody, is going to mess up your children's desire of going to church. Bedside Baptist won't get it. Facebook won't always get it. At some point, you got to be in community within the house of God or else you're going to miss something that God has for you. You know, I, I, um, I, I'm a little old school and... Um, I was born in 88, so I'm old school. Uh, we, we the fusion years. and I like technology and all, uh, but technology is making our children not know how to talk to folk. Can't have a two-minute conversation. Technology is making everything easier for them, and now they don't know the fundamental things that they need to know. Y'all ain't with me. They know how to sound out words, but they don't know what the word means. That's a problem. Don't know their times tables and show don't know their addition. That is a problem. And when the church wakes up, maybe the streets will wake up. But the church don't want to talk about it because you feel like I'm talking about you. No, that's God, baby. He's calling you out to do what you're supposed to do. Stop waiting on the schoolhouse. Stop blaming the superintendent. What are you doing? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. You keep calling them bad. No, you the bad parent. You need to help your children get what they need. Somebody shout from the heart, from the heart. Haggai says, if you don't honor God, you'll sow much but not harvest much. If you don't honor God, you'll eat but you'll never be full. If you don't honor God, you'll drink a whole bunch of drink but you'll never be satisfied. He said, if you don't honor God, you'll clothe yourself but you'll still be cold. He says, if you don't honor God, you'll make a lot of money but it'll be just like putting it in a pocket with holes in it. 
and I don't know who I'm talking to but you better make up your mind today that I'm going to honor God so that the curse is not on me so the curse ain't on my stuff and so the curse ain't on my children and so he says you got to honor me and when you honor me you got to honor me from the heart God says the curse does not have to be your curse if you'd only learn to honor me and honor me from your from your heart well my question to God was well God how do I honor you from the heart God said well if you're going to honor me from the heart, there's three things that I already know. God said it should not have to be requested. <laughs> it's funny how y'all get it in the world, but y'all don't get it in the church. Can, can y'all lean in a little closer? If your boo thing got to be told what to get you all the time, it just ain't the same. I thought I'd have a woman that'll shout right there. Maybe he's sitting close to you. Just look amen if you can't say amen. But God is saying, I should not have to tell you to worship me. Lord have mercy. He says, I should not have to tell Pastor Walker to tell you to put your hands together. I shouldn't have to tell Pastor Walker to tell you, come on, open your mouth and give it what, come on. I don't have to tell the preacher what to tell you. God says you ought to worship me because you know that if it had not been for me, you'd be dead. Sleeping in your grave. Y'all ain't with me this morning. Where is new home Mount Megs? I, I need you to realize, child of God, that if it had not been for God, you'd still be back there where you are. See, y'all acting real boozy and sedity on me this morning. But I came to tell you, some of us been through some stuff that would have made us lose our mind. We would have smoked some. We would have snorted some. We would have been locked up acting a fool. But thanks be unto God. He gave you what you needed. Maybe it's just me. But life be life in and life will stress you out and stress will take you out of here and that's why I thank God for peace that surpasses all understanding All right. he said if it's from the heart it should not have to be requested not requested if it's from the heart it should not be restricted he says he says if you're doing it from the heart uh you shouldn't only do it when you get in the sanctuary. Y'all acting like that ain't some of y'all. You get to the foyer and you start practicing your hallelujah. 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 God says, if you're going to honor me from the heart, you can honor me while you're brushing your teeth. You can honor me while you're driving your car. Put on praise 96.5. You can honor me wherever you may be. You ain't got to wait till you come in the sanctuary and sitting in the pew. But you'll go cuckoo for Cocoa Pup during announcement time, during offering time, while the choir's singing. I will bless the Lord. At all times. Y'all going to make me work up in here. And his praises shall continue. Open up your mouth and give it to him. He said it should not have to be requested. He said if it's from the heart, it should not have to be restricted. But then he said if it's from the heart, it should not be rehearsed. <laughs> what am I saying? You can stop going home, looking in the mirror, trying to get your little two-step together. If God blesses you with a new blessing, you ought to give God a new shout. Every time I don't say the same thing. Every time I don't move the same way. Every time I don't holler the same holler. But if he's been good to you, you ought to give him a good praise. If he's been great to you, you ought to give him a great praise. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. 
I said, let everything that have breath pray. Pray the Lord. I wish you nudge somebody and say, neighbor, he been too good for you to stay seated. He been too good for you to stay quiet. He been too good for you to act like he ain't done it. But if he did it for you, just like he did it for me, we ought to lift him up. We ought to praise his name with everything that's on the inside of us. I got to leave y'all now, but I asked God the question. I said, God, you told me what it's not, but God, I need you to tell me what it is. God said that if you're going to honor me, if you're going to honor me from the heart, it has to be reflective. You got to think about all I've done in your life. He said you got to be reflective. You got to think about the times when you didn't have a dime, but I delivered you right on time. He says you got to be reflective. You got to think about the moments when you had no food in your pantry, but somebody knocked on your door and gave gave you some food uh, somebody bless your cash out somebody gave you uh, what you needed uh, right when you needed it uh, y'all lay on heavy I'm trying to ride uh, but I found out uh, that not only should it be reflective uh, but tell somebody uh, it's got to be repetitive uh, look at your neighbor uh, and tell them you got to keep on doing it if he bless you again you got to keep on honoring him if he prayed you again, you got to keep on praising him. If he made a way again, you got to keep on lifting him. My mama said every time I turn around, he keeps on, keeps on, keeps on doing things and blowing my mind. I wish you look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, y'all ain't talking. Say, neighbor, I know he did it for you and he did it again the reason why is because you're still alive you're still breathing you still uh, got the activity of your limbs uh, how do I know uh, he been good to you uh, because last night you went to sleep but this morning you're here right now kept by the grace kept by the grace of God he allowed you to get here safely. He allowed you uh, to have your right mind. Uh, I wish I had somebody that could shout millions. Uh, didn't make it. Uh, but I am. I'm one of the ones. Uh, one of the ones who did. Uh, I did not know uh, I'd make it past January. But look at me now. Uh, it's November. 2023 uh, is about to be over. Is there anybody who can wave your hands uh, and say thank you? Come on, tell God thank you because you kept me. I got to leave y'all here, but I got one more thing. One more thing to tell you. God said uh, that when you worship me uh, and when you honor me, uh, it's got to be reflective, uh, which means you got to think. Uh, it's got to be repetitive, uh, which means you got to keep on thinking. Uh, but he says, if you do it right, uh, I'm going to reward you. Uh, he said, every time uh, you open up your arms, uh, I'm going to open up a window. Uh, I'm going to pour you out, uh, pour you out a blessing uh, that you have not room, uh, have not room to receive and I don't know who I'm talking to but I need y'all to help me in the pew I need you to prophesy to somebody look them square in the eye and say neighbor eyes have not seen ears have not heard the great things that God has in store for you and if you know he'll do it if you know he'll make a way if you know he'll open doors if you know he'll open eyes you ought to jump to your feet take the brakes up off your boy and lean over touch yourself and say self he's leaning in my direction what does that mean be not dismayed whatever 
whatever betide you because God will won't he take care of you won't he make a way for you won't he open doors for you won't he heal your body won't he keep your mind if you know he will shout yeah 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 and the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so I need you to open your mouth and give God your honor y'all can do better than that come on God says you gotta honor me but you gotta honor me from the heart I'm tired of what you've been doing God says I'm demanding you to do better than what you've been given I don't know what's waiting on me in the future I just don't know I said I don't know what I'll be doing Ten years from now, I just don't know, but I believe that if I keep holding on, God's mercy will keep me strong. Oh, it's in my heart to serve the Lord. It's in my heart. Yes, it is. And I'll be said I don't know what's waiting on me in the future I just don't know and I don't know what I'll be doing ten years from now I just don't know but I believe if I keep holding on God's gonna come for me and keep me strong. It's in my heart. Oh yeah. It's in my heart. Oh yes it is. I'll be serving the Lord. Yeah, I've been singing for a long, long time. I'm not gonna give up. I got a made up mind. I made up mind. I've been lied on, mistreated, y'all, by my so called friends. But if I had another chance, I promise I'd do it all over again, God, it's in my heart. Oh, yeah. It's in my heart. Oh, yes, it is. It's in my heart. I'll be serving Yes, it is in my heart It's in my heart It's in my heart Yes, it is, y'all The reason I want to serve him Because it's in my heart so I got a made up man I got a made up man Come hell or hell water I'm going to serve him is there anybody here that's want to serve him? Wave your hand. So I serve the Lord. Wave your hand. So I serve the Lord. Maybe morning, maybe noon or night. It don't matter. Whenever he called me, I will, I'm sure. I'm going to serve him. Oh, yes, it is. It's in my heart. And I'll be. Anybody going to serve him today? Anybody going to serve the Lord? Anybody going to serve him? Oh, that is in my heart. It's in my heart. Sometimes I feel like I can't go on. But every time I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, 
I can't give them my, I got to keep my own service. Is there anybody here? Go keep my own serving. Go keep my own serving. Go to keep on fighting. Oh, yeah. I've got to serve the Lord while I got time. I got to serve the Lord. While the blood is in my mouth. Oh, 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 yeah. It's in my heart. Oh, has the walk of you on mine today. Help me tell somebody. Oh, I got to clap your hand. Come on. Everybody, everybody clap your hand. Everybody clap your hand. Everybody clap your hand. Said it's in my heart. Everybody say, said it's in my heart. It's in my heart. The reason I do it is cause it's in my heart. The reason I do it is cause it's in my heart. This week, you're gonna sit in tables with some folk that you don't like, but you gotta love them anyway. You gotta treat them right. You gotta love them like God loves you. How do you do it? 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 Cause it's in your heart. It's in your heart. No matter what they did, it's in your heart. You got to love your friend. You got to love your enemy. You got to love your family. Yes, sir. You got to love your friends. Yes, sir. Said it's in my heart. 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 Yeah. 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 Said it's in my heart. Doors of the church are still open. Anybody who needs to come to Christ, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. I said this is your moment. This is your opportunity. Next Sunday is not promised. If you're online watching, tomorrow is not promised. You got a decision to make. Don't allow it to be too late. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for what he's doing. Come on, new home. Good morning, praise God. Today we have several coming, so please hold your applause for the end. We have uh, Tasha Coles coming on the Christian Experience. Please stand. We have Brianna Jones James coming on the Christian Experience. We have Brittany Hicks with her children. They're coming on the Christian Experience. Elijah and Brian. We have two coming for special prayer. Deidre Spain and uh, Nyla Spain. Thank you. Come on, new homeless, make some noise for them. Amen. So we got some new family members. And uh, we're excited. We're excited because I believe that God does everything on purpose and he does everything for a reason. I'm excited because I believe there's some gifts and some talents that God has given you that you're going to have to give back to us. And as you sow, you're also going to reap. Because that which, you're looking at the choir stand, you a singer? Oh, she, she a singer? Don't play with it now. Don't play with it now. I've been known to give somebody the mic. But whatever it is that God has given you, we want you to use it here. And as you use it here, I believe God's going to give back into your life. Somebody thought I cussed. Oh, I said, oh, she. Oh. I don't even remember that. 
Oh, no, I ain't cuss. Y'all calm down. Try to make me go viral. I did not cuss. Amen. <laughs> All right, don't do that. I'm about to say something real crazy then. All right, but we're so grateful that you're a part of this church. We believe wholeheartedly that this is a church that embraces people where they are. We employ people with the works of God. Or rather, we employ people to do the works of God after we've empowered you with the word of God. And so we're excited that you're here. New home, what do we say? Welcome home. Welcome home. Yep, they scared you too, didn't they, mother? <laughs> Welcome home. These are your new brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're excited to be your new family. Those cards that they've given you, those cards have our service times and dates on them. We want you to fully connect with us, please. As you go with our, um, our assimilation ministry, they're going to get you to text that number, get some information from you and get some information to you. Because we want you to not just be a spectator, we want you to be a participator. Amen? Amen. All right. So, our assimilation crew over there, wave your hand, Sister Pruitt. Hey there. Hey there. Sister Jackson, I see you. All right, there, right there, if you can go in that direction, I want you to get your purse and your belongings before you go with them, all right? Awesome. Come on, give God praise for them. Amen. All right, I believe in prayer. I believe that whatever you need from God, God is able to do just what you need. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. And the reality that they're at the altar is them asking God for something very particular. When you're asking God for something particular, you only need the people to pray for you that actually got faith. You can't have everybody in your prayer circle when you really need God to move. And so all of my prayer warriors, I need you to stretch your right hand towards the altar as we pray over baby girl and we pray over her family. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, you control the universe. And Father, it's saying that you sit high, but you look low. Though we've been through some valleys, Father, and we have to go to the valleys to get to the mountaintop. But we can't do it without you. We need your strength, God. We need your grace, and we need your mercy. For we walk, oh God, alone. Without you, God, we can do nothing. But on our journey, God, we trust in you. That whatever the season bring, God, you are the soul. God, you are the mold, oh God. Now shape us and form us what you would have us to do and to be. Whatever the situation is, is God, your blood on Calvary has been shedding, oh God, that will clean us whiter than snow. Yes, yes. Every problem that we can endure, God, you've already conquered it. No matter what the devil sends at us, God, you've already defeated him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Father, this is family. family. Let them bind together, God, in one common goal that's to trust you and worship you in spirit yes, and in truth. God, we have no magic wine, oh God, that we can wine up, but we trust and we believe in you. Yes, Father, you've healed our bodies. Yes, God, you've put food on our tables and you put clothes on our back. You put a roof over our heads. Yes, you met our needs. Oh. And right now, this place and time, we glorify you. Yes, yes, we glorify you for what you have done. We glorify you, Father, what you're doing right now. Yes, sir. And God, we trust and we believe that you're going to take care of us in the end, just like you started in the beginning. Right. So we trust you for things that going to come. Yes, sir. 
out of this mother and this daughter. Bind them up and let them know, oh God, that do harm is their family. We come, oh God, to lift them up before you. That God, as we go on and encourage them, oh God, in faith, that you will carry them, oh God, as they go about worshiping you on this journey. Now every voice, oh God, every heart be lifted up for them and we pour out our spirits unto you to deliver unto them what they need, oh God, what they're yearning for and what you know, God, they deserve. This blessing we ask all in the name of your son Jesus. Amen. amen. And the church said amen. Amen, amen. amen. again. Come on, give God praise for what he's doing. Amen. God is a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. Time has been far spent. Worship has been had. A word has been given. And I believe it's time for us to depart from this place. Did y'all learn anything this morning? Take a look and see what God has done. Look and see. Come on, let's stand. Look and see. Take a look and see. Look at your neighbor and say, Look and see. Look and see. Take a look and see what God has done. All of my mothers, all of my fathers, all of the parents or grandparents in the room, I want you to be reminded, um, once again, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Uh, us older men are trying to take these younger men uh, to see wrestling. It's a wrestling match, not wrestling like y'all said, but wrestling. Uh, we're going to go see the WWE uh, so that we can get a relationship with these young boys. Please don't be one who says what the church does not do when you don't bring your children to be a part of what the church is doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is an opportunity for the young men. Opportunities will be coming soon for the young girls. Uh, if you might have a child or a son that is mature, but maybe not in the fifth grade, please see one of us men. Uh, we, we can't handle no babies. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, but we would definitely love to make and start a relationship with these young boys that they can be steered in the admonition of the Lord while they're being raised. Amen. Amen. All right. Look at your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, hey, neighbor. you look good today. today. Uh-huh, tell them, say, I see you looking. I see you looking. Like you looking look. with your looking self. Look. Amen. Now look at somebody, tell them happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. 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 We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for all that our eyes have seen. We thank you for all that our ears have heard. We thank you for the moments of information, God. We thank you for the moments of celebration and worship. And God, we decree and declare that there shall be application in our lives. God, we don't want to curse over us. We don't want to curse over our stuff and we don't, don't want to curse over our, our children, our seeds, Father God. So continue, Father God, to use us as an instrument to honor you, get the glory out of our lives. Continue to bless us, Father God, everyone under the sound of my voice. Bless our families, Father God, as we come together, family coming from near and far. Give them safety, Father God. As they drive, as they fly, wherever or whatever means they may come, give them safety as they arrive here. If we're leaving, Father God, give us safety as we're on our way. And God, we pray against every demonic force that can show up at the Thanksgiving meal. Every demonic force that can show up to make our families more separate, to make our families more divided. God, we believe that the devil don't like unity, so he'll do everything he can to tear us apart. We cast it down 
down in the mighty name of Jesus and we believe Father God that as we come together we'll be able to be the instrument that rings out praise to your name we'll ring out praise to our family about what all the good things are that God has done in our lives God we thank you because you've been so good to us now as we leave this place we pray we don't leave your presence it's our prayer dear God that your Holy Spirit will walk with us talk with us guide us down the dangerous highways and byways of life allow your Holy Spirit Father God to give us peace that surpasses all understanding allow your Holy Spirit Father God to replace our sorrow with joy and be our hope for tomorrow God we love you and we praise you so we pray this prayer unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy the only wise God our Savior be majesty dominion and power forever and evermore all of God's children ought to shout it loud and say amen 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 again pastor Walker loves you y'all have a great week tune in Wednesday night to see a taste with lady T Streaming now. This is New Home News. Good morning and welcome to New Home Mount Mix, the home where we embrace, empower, and employ. Take out your pen, your pad, or your phone so that you can stay connected because note takers are move makers. Our next steps new members class is now in session, 9 a.m. in the fellowship hall weekly. You may join us every Wednesday for New Home Improvement at 6.30 p.m. on New Home Strong Virtual. But this Wednesday, we will be tuning in and checking out New Home Out Mags Presents A Taste with Lady T, Virtual Ministry and Meal Prep on Facebook Live. You don't want to miss it. New Home Family, our Turkey Day Classic Parade lineup will open at 6.30 a.m. at the Patterson Field parking lot. If you are participating in the parade, please be at the church campus by 6 a.m. to travel You're in your vehicles or carpool to Patterson Field. Dress warm in your new home attire. The parade starting time will be at 9 a.m. If you just want to stand and watch, any place on Dexter Avenue is a great spot. Happy Thanksgiving! The men's ministry desires to take our distinguished gentlemen for a night out of fun to WWE at the Coliseum in Montgomery, Alabama on January 20th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Age groups 5th to 12th grade. There will be a sign-up sheet in the vestibule. Please make sure to join in on this fun. Troy Arts Council presents Sheila Jackson and Friends Christmas Concert December 1st at 7 p.m. with Tanya Terry as the host and Willie B. Williams Jr. as the other host featuring our own Pastor Lee B. Walker. Tickets are $20. Get yours today. For more information, contact 334-282-9574. If you're celebrating a birthday in the month of November, please submit your full name, birth date, and a baby picture to newhomesocial at gmail.com no later than November 22nd. Galatians 6 2 tells us, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Praying for one another is a powerful way for us to bear one another's burdens. So let's continue to lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ because it's them today, but it could be us tomorrow. We know this was a lot of information, but for your convenience, we have calendars in the lobby. You can also stay connected through our virtual spaces on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube on demand at New Home Mount Meg. I'm Joseph, and this has been New Home News.